Assalamu alaikum. You're watching Views and News, and I'm Faisal Rahman live from our Islamabad studios. Today we'll be talking about uh, the ongoing Indian atrocities in the Indian illegally occupied uh, Jammu and Kashmir. We'll be also talking about uh, uh, Pakistan to observe the Black Day, which is tomorrow, the 27th of October. And uh, PTV World as well as uh, PTV News, they'll be having a whole day transmission on this very, very important uh, day. Uh, then we will be talking about the angry Kashmiris would prefer Chinese rule. This was a statement given by uh, the former chief minister of uh, the Indian illegally occupied Jammu and Kashmir, uh, Farooq Abdullah. We will raise Indian flag only once our state flag is back. This was stated by Mehbooba Mufti, again the former chief minister of uh, the Indian illegally occupied Jammu and Kashmir and her father was also a very known leader. Uh, then we are linked to India because of our state's flag. Again, as I mentioned, that was stated by Mehbooba Mufti. Then BJP calls for action against Mehbooba Mufti in return. Now, this was the retaliation uh, from the government side. And uh, now we are also witnessing a seven-party uh, people's alliance in the Indian illegally occupied Jammu and Kashmir. We'll be talking about that also in, in detail. Uh, then Alliance demands restoration of uh, IIOJK's special status and we are talking about the uh, Article 370 and 35A here. Uh, to talk about this, uh, we have with us in our studio on my right is uh, Air Vice Marshal retired uh, Ikramullah Bhatti Sahab who is a senior defence analyst. Bhatti Sahab, thank you very much sir for your time. And we have with us Altaf and Vani Sahab. Vani Sahab is again a senior leader of APHC. Thank you very much, Vani Sab, for your time as well. And Thank we'll you. be also talking to Dr. Asma Shakir Khwaja Saiba. She is an IR expert and uh, she is joining us over the video link. Thank you very much, Dr. Saiba, for your time as well. Now, uh, AVM Bhatti Sahib, first of all, sir, a couple of statements from the Indian senior leadership. You talk about Mehbooba Mufti. You talk about her father, late Mr. Mufti. You talk about... Uh, Farooq Abdullah, or you talk about the statements coming from his son, Umar Abdullah. People have served as the chief ministers in that area, sir, and they are very seasoned and senior uh, politicians. Now, a statement saying that it was better that Chinese would have ruled Kashmir. Obviously, they can't say Pakistan. Maybe this is what he meant, that Kashmiris would be uh, happier in that case. Mehbooba Mufti says that um, we are linked to India because of our uh, state's flag. That's it. What is that supposed to mean, sir? Well, you see, uh, ever since 1989, we have seen this uh, indigenous uprising in Kashmir to uh, reach the next level. And finally, uh, after the uh, abrogation of these two articles that you just mentioned, I think uh, the uh, leadership uh, of the Kashmiris in illegally occupied uh, in, uh, Kashmir has also realized that uh, their elders had made a mistake when they uh, sided with Nehru and not with uh, Qadi Azam. And now these statements coming from their leadership, the current leadership, is a clear manifestation of the fact that uh, besides the indigenous struggle which the youth is carrying on in, uh, in Kashmir, their political leadership has also joined in politically. And uh, as you uh, rightly pointed out, uh, instead of saying Pakistan, he referred to China as, as, the, as, as the more acceptable uh, uh, government in, in, in that area and of course uh, Mahbubha Mufti is saying that uh, they will uh, fly the Indian flag only if their own state flag is there. So I think it, it's a, a very clear indication that uh, uh, the, the Kashmiri struggle has now entered a uh, uh, next level mm -hmm. where they, their even the political leadership has joined in in their own way and uh, I think uh, it is now for the world to see uh, that uh, this struggle has uh, reached a new dimension and, uh, and for the Indian leadership also to see that uh, while they have been attempting for the last uh, over 30 years since 1989 to uh, uh, brutally crush this uh, freedom movement and uh, which they have failed after having uh, killed over nearly 100,000 Kashmiris and uh, inflicted innumerable atrocities, disappearing of uh, young people, raping of women. And uh, I think uh, now is the time when we also see that the world is now taking notice of it. It's being discussed in the UK Parliament, in the European Parliament. The UN has taken ample notice of this. E even in the uh, American media, we find that there are reports coming out. 
So I think it's time that the Indians took a notice of all this, uh, both locally within uh, India, within the Indian uh, illegally occupied Kashmir, and of course the world uh, taking notice of it. And I think uh, the, the, their demand of the Kashmiris to uh, have a uh, situation where these articles are restored and uh, Kashmir regains its original status. And then of course, eventually it leads to the, the, uh, the right of self-determination which has been promised to them by the UN on several occasions and which has been also agreed to and committed by the Indian leadership, uh, the earlier Indian leadership several times on several occasions, even in writing. So that is uh, something pretty interesting. I mean, maybe the mindset is changing or this last year after the 5th of August uh, 2019 till this date, things have really changed on ground in India. People, <clears throat> not only in Kashmir, but in particular when I say people, the minorities, whether Muslims or the Sikhs or any other minority for that matter, they feel very threatened under the rule of BJP. And when you hear stories coming out uh, from BJP, I mean practically threatening not only those states around India, but states within India also, sir. You see, uh, basically from uh, 2014 when the BJP government took on in, in India, their attitude towards the minorities uh, in India and especially to the people of Indian occupied Kashmir uh, was rather uh, uh, an arrogant uh, type of uh, statements came from the Indian leadership, from the Indian army. I have stated before, uh, we have not seen such uh, statements from the Indian army before the uh, army leadership as the uh, leaders, uh, Indian army leadership also became uh, very political uh, in their political in yeah. that sense. So. I mean, uh, that's the Indian side. But when it comes to Kashmir, if you see in Kashmir, uh, last, uh, on, from 5th August onwards, when you uh, stated the statements of Farooq Abdullah, Mahabba Mufti, that I don't think these are not enough for them to regain their political position in Kashmir. They also know that uh, what they have done in last 73 years, their forefathers or they have been the collaborators in the uh, Indian system, they, they were the ones uh, who are responsible for death and destruction in Kashmir because of their alignment with India. But after doing so much of service to the Indian uh, colonialism in Kashmir, they were thrown into the jails and the Article 370 or 35A on these things, they were uh, rather befooling the people of Kashmir and taking votes and coming to the power and Indian establishment was all with them. But then Indian establishment. So primarily, it was all about uh, enjoying the uh, the power, power state. states. Yeah. But now they see they are out of the system, and people uh, of Kashmir have rejected them totally. What you're saying that uh, uh, whether you talk about the daughter of Mufti Saab, Mehbooba Mufti, or the son of uh, Farooq Abdullah, Omar Abdullah, they are practically out of the scene. And now these were the two very big political families and big names also. You see, they were the big names. They were the big political families only because the Indian uh, establishment, Indian uh, the policy makers, they, they wanted them to stay they, there. They wanted them to stay there. Mm -hmm. Always they brought him to the power because they were collaborating with them. But after the abrogation of Article uh, 35A and 370, when they were sent behind the bars, there was no protest for them in Kashmir. You could see whatever the protests were in Kashmir, those were held for the uh, APHC leaders, for the leaders of resistance movement who are in jail. None of their support uh, uh, people came on roads to support uh, them. They know that the people of Kashmir uh, overall have rejected their political theory. And even at this time, when they talk about that if there is a Kashmir map and uh, Kashmir flag and we will have, again they are talking under the Indian constitution. So this is not acceptable to the people of Kashmir. So we should not be so much uh, happier with their statements what they have given. What Farooq Abdullah said that uh, people in Kashmir would like to have Chinese rule rather than the Indian rule. It is uh, uh, the reality on ground that the people of Kashmir, the young people of Kashmir do not want the Indian rule. What Farooq Abdullah said he threatened to India and but he was ag again uh, asked to uh, take his statement mm -hmm. back. 
So, we should not be that much happier with what they said, but this is a lesson for them. How Indians treated them, as Air Marshal uh, rightly pointed out, that their forefathers had done a mistake in the past, siding with, the, uh, uh, with Nehru, mm -hmm. not siding with the Jinnah. That was their mistake. But now coming to after August uh, 5th uh, abrogation, we see that Indians have failed totally in Kashmir, putting whole of the state under lockdown, putting whole of the state under a communication blockade, and bringing more and more army into the state. Uh, yesterday we had a research uh, that uh, we generally talk uh, there are uh, 900,000 Indian troops in Kashmir. But actually, practically, there are 1.5 million Indian troops in Kashmir. In various forms. Uh, there are million forms. Mm -hmm. There is uh, 700,000 regular army. There is uh, 3,500 uh, uh, paramilitary forces. There is one, uh, uh, 130,000 uh, police. And along with that, you have the task force. You have now the village defense committees, the RSS people who have been armed by the Indian government. And these, and these actually is 1.5 million uh, people who have the, who are uh, there. On the trigger the happy 1.5 million. So this is one part. But India tried in last mm. one year. They tried to that they will do all this, and by that by that they will put a dent in the freedom struggle and all that. But what happened actually is that world war. We saw a reaction on that. We saw the reaction in international media. We saw a reaction in international think tanks. We saw a reaction of the international human rights groups on India. And, India, and uh, Indian government failed to establish any of the political uh, uh, rather gam in Kashmir. They are not getting any collaborator at present to serve their purpose in But now, sir, uh, today, I mean, there is a big development also because <clears throat> Interestingly, the Secretary of State of United States of America and the Secretary of Defense, both Mr. Mark Esper as well as Mr. Mike Pompeo, they are both in Delhi. So that tells the story that the kind of confidence the Western world is enjoying uh, with the Indians as a huge democracy or otherwise. I mean, this issue of Kashmir is still at the back burner for them. I'll just get back to that. Uh, but let me also engage uh, Dr. Uh, Asma Khwaja. Dr. Saibab, tomorrow is the 27th of October and interestingly, uh, that's the black day uh, that is going to be observed not only in Pakistan but wherever the Kashmiris are present. Now, first of all, ma'am, your take uh, in respect to that particular date. See, uh, 27th October is the black day because it marks the colonization of Kashmir by Indian colonial occupant. So, definitely if any of India's policy was ever able to silence Kashmiris or to uh, convince Kashmiris to uh, to accept Indian colonization, then that day would not be celebrated as the Black Day. So first of all, uh, this day, day is the symbol of 73 long years of Kashmiris freedom struggle. But in the, I would say indigenous Kashmiri freedom struggle to uh, to seek their right to self determination, first of all, and then as I always say, as you were mentioning, the alliance of uh, former pro India political leadership of Kashmir. As I always say that when in Modi government or Modi regime revoked the Article 370, it was a betrayal for the pro-Indian uh, politicians with whom India signed this agreement of not to disturb the status of Kashmir at the first place. But definitely, uh, this is really sad for me uh, as, as a student of international affairs that, f like, I don't, like, we, we have read things that children of letter, lesser gods whose cries and whose uh, the whose life is not been noticeable by the haves or so elites of international society so kashmiris are con consistent and committed in their struggle against against indian colonization but their everything they face all the brutalities all the human rights violations all the state sponsored terrorism all the state sponsored no, uh, non-state actors inflicting terrorism and violence on the uh, innocent civilians of Kashmir. Kashmir, the region which was least um, 
connect which which is a least reported conflict for the international uh, media kashmir where the covid 19 policies and it were not even implemented and kashmiris were like there there was uh, uh, soldier for for uh, every i think seven kashmiris there is one soldier but for 70000 kashmiris there was one ventilator so kashmiri kashmiris are uh, facing and surviving i would say the uh, the most brutal oppression at the hand of indian colonial power so this this is what the world needs to acknowledge world needs to remi- remember that they had promised kashmiris that their rights and their right to choose would be respected they they have promised them right of self determination so i think that it is because like india whenever india ignores the the non violent demands like right now they are um, they are the political there there is no space in kashmir for political voices there is no space in kashmir for political leadership and what india indian led military is trying to to construct their own puppet so called non popular uh, leadership so they now they want to get away from mehbooba mufti and uh, farooq abdullah and such all other such pro indian uh, politicians and then now they want to create another puppet leadership which they with whom and uh, with the help of them they can play keep playing on with the future of kashmiri civilians so this situation is really uh, alarming definitely it is alarming for last 73 years but right now when we see the the, the for for example today uh, indian nsa stated that we will fight against our enemies not only on indian soil but any other soil across the globe so this with with, with an with an indian leadership with, with with such oppressive mindset such violent postures such aggressive attitude this situation and the life of kashmiri is kashmiris are now even worse they are even more uh, they are facing unbearable i'm sure we all remember the issue of pellet guns the issue of large the longest siege kashmir is quarantined by indian government for last like particularly several several years but especially for last one year more than one year rather but you see the the uh, uh, the the international community the people they are not speaking about it and now after revoking or denying the basic right of individual state because we should not forget that kashmir is the is the largest uh, is the is the muslim majority state and uh, it is india and indian atrocities and indian already which has already converted jammu into a hindu majority uh, region and we all know that jammu is part of kashmir so jammu and kashmir india has already successfully challenged changed transformed the demographic realities in the favor of indian colony colonization so we need to understand all these or not we rather international community needs to understand all these dimensions of oppression and this oppression is i, I would not say that it is single focused oppression it is a multi layered and connected oppression and indian government is trying to 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 malign to is trying to one number one is trying to malign the kashmir freedom freedom movement by connecting is it both with all other illegitimate acts of violence for example terrorism so kashmiri and all international law says that a, a freedom struggle which is been raised which has been supported which has been instigated which has been launched by the indigenous native people against a foreign occupant is not illegitimate it is not something which we should uh, because and then we have to remember that on violent ways to to mend their fences uh, 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 i'll just get back to you on that uh, yeah uh, okay let me also uh, have a word with um, avm saab Even if there was a statement by the chief of the state of UP, he said that uh, Modi has set a date for war with China and Pakistan. Now, the Swat Antra Dev Singh. Now, what kind of a statement is that that Modi has set a date for a war with Pakistan and China? 
इज दिस प्योर हंड्रेड परसेंट वॉर मॉन्ग्रेंग वॉर स्टेरिया से सर्टली नॉट आई थिंक इज जस्ट इट्स इट जस्ट अ पोलिटिकल स्टैंड आई गेस जस्ट फॉर दियर ओन डोमेस्टिक कंजम्पन एंड द Indian leadership, uh, both military and political, they know fully well that they are no uh, position to even fight Pakistan alone. Then what to talk of uh, fight uh, China and Pakistan together? So giving a date is just uh, for uh, just a political statement for their own voters and uh, just to. So similar statements have been issued by the military of India as well. Obviously, no general would like to say that you know they can lose the war. obviously they want to encourage their forces and troops and everything but uh, but like this kind of a statement not only seems ridiculous but also raises a lot of concerns uh, that if one of the top notch bjp leaders sitting in india enjoying the power is the chief minister and uh, comes up with a statement of that sort and look at his outfit and everything so matlab <laughs> this is something which is <laughs> well uh, you see uh, it bothers while they they they're exposing themselves they're re- revealing their uh, mindset they're revealing their uh, uh, the, the kind of uh, thoughts they had that they have in their mind because uh, when when the world uh, hears this sees this uh, that uh, such a statement is coming from a senior leadership uh, within india uh, it, it just means to say that uh, uh, what are they thinking what are they saying and uh, whom are they saying all this and uh, their war mongering or the war hysteria which pakistan has been uh, uh, reporting for last uh, several months uh, especially after uh, last year's episode of, of february and uh, just to draw the attention of the world i think it goes on to prove pakistan's point that uh, the indian uh, mindset continues uh, to be hegemonic towards its neighbors and they they are even prepared to uh, you know uh, take on china at least uh, in their statements which uh, actually uh, uh, brings out uh, india as a, as a threat a threat not just to the the uh, the regional peace but to the world peace because god forbid if it does uh, happen that uh, there is a military conflict uh, involving these three countries uh, it will certainly escalate now sir as as we speak um, mike pompeo as well as uh, uh, the <coughs> secretary of uh, defense mark esper they both in delhi and sir these are the two most powerful uh, i think individuals after the president of united states of america i am mean, the movers and the shakers the decision makers primarily and they they always show their support now they have practically come to look after the issue with with china and maybe how to counter china because now the americans are there 100% for the indians so this kind of a support sir, could lead into a conflict you know when you when you see the americans at your back sir well uh, you see uh, uh, one has to keep in mind that the uh, american election is just a week away third so uh, so there there has to be some linkage between uh, the election and this visit and at the same time while the the american what's the significance i mean that's the point i mean yes. last 7 days and both these guys have been told to go in india and you know maybe sign some documents or have some sort and, of a deal done and the fact is that the americans would want some skirmish to take place between china and india and uh, while i i think the indians would not be foolish uh, enough to listen to that or f- feel that as an encouragement or a support and they they are wise enough uh, to to uh, look at the indian uh, they look at the american design behind such a support uh, at this at this time and because because they they fully know and they have already uh, declared there is a statement by mr modi that no indian territory has been occupied by china so that clearly indicates that they have uh, no issue with the situation as far as the land dispute is concerned yes and that is the dispute mm-hmm. so if they have no issue with it there is no reason f- uh, for them to go to war even if the americans want them to and i i think the indians do realize that the americans are in a way nudging them or coaxing them into uh, into some sort of a conflict mm-hmm. because they, they 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 like to you know uh slow down uh, china's growth and uh, and, and its rising uh, image as a not just a, a, a economic power but as a political strength or even as a military strength uh, in the world as a, as a competitor to, to the us so if the china does engage in a military conflict in india of course that is going to affect adversely the uh, rising china's image 
so they would be more than happy uh, that if uh, uh, india does engage uh, with china in, in a military conflict but i think the indians are uh, sensible enough pragmatic enough and they have already demonstrated that that they realize the situation and they know where they stand vis-a-vis -vis china they they couldn't take on pakistan just last year and how could they think of even getting into a conflict with the china that on the behest of america so i i think uh, this visit is just going to be a step in that direction where uh, mr trump is going to sub, uh, get some more approvals or some more support uh, from india which may help him in in, in the in, in the american election and uh, maybe he is aiming at the indian uh, votes out there certainly sir? certainly because That's a huge uh, number. if yeah. you recall uh, you know the uh, the visit that mr modi had uh, in which they they, they organized howdy that, modi yes so <laughs> I, i think it is a continuation of the same mm. spirit or mm. same um, uh, you know uh, concept and same uh, campaign that mr trump is pursuing to have some more support uh, or maybe the maybe these two gentlemen are in delhi to in fact give the absolute support of the americans also because the coming uh, a week prior to the american election is something which is not very usual you see uh, the typical character of the american election is that the uh, a, a large chunk of voters remain undecided till very late and here if the uh, the swing votes swing votes and here if the uh, the the uh, the two visitors from the us are uh, go ahead with signing certain agreements which is going to of course win the support of the indians in favor of uh, trump then of course that is what would be their objective now that is a very interesting uh, point you just raised i mean now so the kind of engagement i mean of the indians uh, regional wise if you are looking at it nepal pakistan um, sri lanka now china uh, obviously the chinese have their own influence in the region sir whether you talk about certain other countries where the indians also believe they had it seems that uh, maybe indians were much used to bullying pakistan or or smaller countries like um, uh, in their neighbor countries like uh, nepal or or sri lanka for that matter but this time they will be tested because they are dealing with a lot of people do believe that the chinese have actually uh, taken over as far as the economy is concerned they have a bigger economy than the americans and we will see that post covid 19 results i mean how much the americans have lost how much the chinese have gained for that matter but looking at the overall scenario it seems that the americans they have always uh, you know supported the idea of a war away from america they have maybe there was i mean both these stories they have very uh, dubious characters and the approach is very different whether you talk about 911 sir could be an inside job a lot of fingers they do point uh, towards that kind of a scenario and then the pearl harbor attack again uh, the weak defenses maybe they wanted them to attack and get rid of that obsolete uh, fleet yeah. other than that sir i think the war, the the civil war that's it rest of all the wars first world war second world war the the global invasion took uh, talk about um, uh, middle east you talk about countries um, around otherwise the americans have always had their pressure now sir this is going to be the first time that we'll be seeing withdrawal just like what they did in germany or maybe they'll be do doing that in afghanistan also you see a different world whether the uh, republican gets the office or the democrats they get the office the overall philosophy remains the same sir and maybe they are pushing the indians to counter the chinese they are themselves uh, there in the form of quad australian japanese and american uh, fleets they are there time interesting times ahead this is uh, this is very interesting engaging this india been, huh? this has been <laughs> engaging india now hmm. uh, you see uh, they they tried to uh, as it is a well known fact down that indians they tried to put india before china to counter china in this region and to counter the chinese economy and now they are pushing the indians to have a, a war with china or some circumstances with china so that they come into seven and cord will also have something to do in the south asian sea but uh, as abim sahab rightly said that uh, i don't think there is going to be any uh, india china war at this time uh, or anything like that 
if that happens, if that happens, if anything happens, then then other powers will have also to come into. Sir, the there is a global they recession. Will, they will. They, they will, negative. They will, uh, yeah. uh, uh, you know, output as Already far as the economic growth is concerned. Court, I mean, this can lead to it. Why Australia, not? Australia, Australia's economy is shrinking. They have their own problems. Others have their own problems. But if if there is a war, if there is something like that, then other powers, Russia and others, will have also to take the sides. Then they will serve, and it will now then create a world war. So, in be, the Armenian uh, and the so Azerbaijan conflict, the Russians remain very neutral. Very. They, See, they are, I mean, they are playing a neutral, neutral role. I mean, they won't. I don't know whether they'll be taking sides with the Americans or the world Chinese. World quality is different in Armenia and Azerbaijan politics. We see that they, all those who are in but other sir, conflicts, they, they are rivals, but they, are, they were uh, their friends. They were they, they were there for the support of the Azerbaijan people. So that's a different uh, thing. But in in this context, this is, is a different ball game in this region. Uh, the Americans coming to th in this time is firstly, I think it is related more to the American elections as it has been in the American elections to win the Indian votes and to have this and already uh, Modi sending the, that uh, he also narrated in Urdu um, Trump once more. Uh, so Modi, Trump, friendship, this is uh, one sort of thing which is going on. And the Indians have been campaigning for the uh, uh, Trump administration for the uh, last uh, five years. And uh, again, in, during this election, they are also doing it. And they are putting all their resources for Trump election campaign in uh, United States. So this, this is more to that and also, uh, also a signal to the China and also to rather uh, back India uh, to have its heavy hand on China, but that is not going to happen. But what is this time? In this region, we can see when India tried to isolate Pakistan and was blowing Pakistan in the region, now we can see that India is isolated in the region. India doesn't have a good relations with uh, the Chinese now, not with Pakistan, nor with Nepal, and even Bangladesh and Sri Lanka who are very much closer to them, they are not, uh, not, not happy with the uh, recent policies of the uh, Modi uh, and this Modi administration and what the Modi government is doing in India and, and their expansionism in, in this region. So I think India is in that way cornered in this region. Now, now they bank on the uh, American support and all those world support. Uh, you know, in the world also, in different Western countries, you can see there is large talk about now the, in the way the Indian uh, state is behaving. This is large talk in the civil society in the West, in the think tanks in the West, and India is losing its support in um, the civil society, in the think tanks, in the academia, in the West, where they had a very huge support earlier. It was a secular India, it was an incredible India. Now it is talked about as an intolerant India. It is talk talked about as, uh, as they are pursuing their agenda of Hindutva, they are seen as a bigger threat now in the uh, West also. So the Indians' policies over the period of time, the Modi policies from last two, three years have totally uh, failed the India at international level. If you can, the sport, at, at, you, could, uh, you can't have ma uh, imagined mm -hmm. to have the editorials in Washington Post, in New York Times, in Wall Street Journal before this. Now, there was nobody ready to uh, uh, write anything against India. But now you can see uh, huge stories and editorials in, in those papers. So the world is changing also. Uh, we're coming to this, our, uh, what's our main problem today, which we're discussing the Kashmir issue, the Kashmir, the Black Day also. Uh, this is a major uh, thing for the international community to look at, the, how the things are turning into Kashmir and what we can do also. We have to think ourselves, mm -hmm. our government, what they can do under these circumstances. These are the bigger questions for us. Exactly. Let's take the same point to Dr. Asma Khwaja Saiba. Ma'am, do you believe that the current situation really suits the Kashmiris, ma'am, where the abrogation of Article 370 uh, is talked about or uh, for that matter statements coming uh, uh, from uh, Mehbooba Mufti and uh, you know the Indians have also shown a lot of concern about the attitude of these leaders whether it's Farooq Abdullah, Umar Abdullah or the Hurriyat leadership. Most of these Hurriyat leaders are either uh, detained by the forces or they are under house arrest. So just putting a pressure for for how long ma'am will it matter? This means that the Indians are sort of engaged now 100% in Kashmir because of the 
the kind of commitment the Kashmiri youth is showing in particular, ma'am, no matter what uh, sort of atrocities they go through or the kind of torture uh, they have to undertake. But uh, at the end of the day, it's the will that's keeping them alive and that will is increasing on almost daily basis. Dr. Saiba. Yeah, see, uh, such situation of cannot suit any oppressed nation, first of all. But yes, Kashmiris, if, if we see as a whole, Kashmiris as a nation, the India has lost its political, the genuine political space in Kashmiri politics. It has lost its pro-Indian, uh, which we call Hindu, Hindu Nawaz, Yam, India Nawaz, uh, Kashmiri lead political leadership, they have lost them. So that is why uh, India is in a fix in Kashmir right now because all the atrocities, all the violations of international human, ri human rights law, international law of armed conflict is not bringing the desired results for India. Indian policy especially during Modi regimes have highlighted Kashmir as a, one of the most important trigger for conflict in South Asia, most important trigger for uh, any uh, volatile conflict. It has brought Kashmir to the forefront of international uh, political and for the first time we see, for last few years we are seeing that international media is quoting uh, uh, stories about Kashmir from the perspective of humanity. They are not even like to touch the political side of the conflict, so this means grief of common Kashmiri is being has been noticed by international uh, media and when you were asking that why Modi uh, Modi regime or they, they it's uh, it's uh, allies are talking about such aggressive uh, or giving aggressive statements the reason may be that if we see if during last two three years India is sliding down on all indicators of development and democracy well, whether that's, it that's is freedom true. of but you know we have to look inwards also ma'am uh, talking about the role of international media honestly sometimes i just can't understand that why do we end up saying this that the international media is expo is exposing india no ma'am it's the other way around i'll just give you an example of bbc or, or cnn for that matter ma'am whenever there is a break there is an indian ad of oil or something today i was watching uh, BBC and there comes a story yeah. just like you know inside Africa now they have started a show about India that an Indian girl is sitting and interviewing the Indian uh, people and you know they have got a slot I'm just giving one showing their perspective their narrative and last but not the least yeah. on Deutsche Welle I was watching uh, the uh, one of, it was a Pakistani person reporting uh, from Islamabad for DWTV and uh, interestingly, the way they were talking about uh, whatever happened in Quetta last evening, uh, I mean, they are ex kind of presenting the same picture with the Indian media is presenting, ma'am. So we should be very careful when we say, that, well, the international, maybe some yeah. odd person has yes, written sir. one story maybe. about the Indians in some uh, magazine or, or a newspaper. But ma'am, when you talk about international media, the ratio is not even 95 to 5%. In, in our favor. Yes, please, ma'am, go ahead. One thing, um, what you are talking about, it's the politics of media. So yeah. we need to understand if tail wage the dog or dog wage the tail. But uh, we cannot ignore the commercialization or commercial aspect of media. So that's their we strength, ma'am. That's what I'm saying. Multi, yeah, so, so what, what media an ad is not because they are siding or standing by India. Uh, the, the reason is that, that that brings profit for them. So similarly, when we see uh, some Indian people uh, living or talking on, on those media, we cannot hijack the narrative, uh, Faisal. Most important thing is if we are able to share our side of story. So what I was saying, it was referring to that now international media is sharing the Kashmiri side of story. They are talking about how, I, I'm sure you know that the Press Freedom Award or Best Journalist, Photojournalist Award uh, for this year, I, know. I forgot the name of the award was given to 
Kashmiri journalists who only photograph the atrocities of Indian military. So we need, if the my my point was that we need to see that if our narrative is or our discourse is finding its space, it doesn't mean that our discourse has hijacked the hundred percent of international airtime. No. No, but can we are finding our space there? I'm sure you know the articles published in New York Times, in Washington Post, in Guardian. They were all, most of them were talking about, uh, regarding Kashmir, most of them were talking about that how Kashmiris have been betrayed and deceived by India and what they are facing right now in India. I, primarily, few days back, because I, when I went through those articles, I mean, ma'am, primarily they were more about the human rights rather than the Kashmir cause. Or the Kashmir movement, ma'am. A quick comment yeah. from uh, Vani sir, please. Sir. Yeah, I'll echo with uh, madam, as she rightly pointed out that uh, you see uh, the, the media. There is one side of that, uh, their financial side, and the other is the other story. What the international media has come out, I can challenge you. The international media has more reported on Kashmir, though on human rights values, than our own media. You cannot see that much of stories in our big newspapers, English newspapers, than you can see in the international newspapers. That's what they uh, told, tell us about the inside story of Kashmir. You have the reports on BBC, CNN, Al Jazeera, Press TV and others on Kashmir. Then you have in, on your own uh, televisions in Islamabad or private media in Islamabad. When, you, when we talk about the private yeah. media in Islamabad, they also have these same problem, commercial problems. When you see the advertisements there, you can see even a lot of Indian advertisements in your own. So that is that's what we have to do. That is what we have where Marisa, we have we've to been invest. talking about it where for a very long time. The government, where it comes yeah. is the government, where yeah. it comes is our institutions. They have to invest in it. Only then you can get that space. The narrative. That space doesn't come through morals or anything else. That uh, what is up, thank you very much. Uh, and in fact, uh, I was just told that we do not have much time left. So I'll try to wrap up the show, sir. AVM sir, it was a Indeed. pleasure having you. Thank you so much, Vani sir. Doc Saiba, it was a pleasure having you as well. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, and that's all we have for this um, hour. I'll see you, inshallah, tomorrow. Rather, tomorrow we'll be having a huge uh, a telethon on the 25th of October. On the 27th of October, that is the Black Day, Kashmir Day in 1947. As we all know, that that was the date when the Indians, uh, they took over Kashmir forcefully. But um, we'll be having a detailed discussion tomorrow uh, in our program from 8 to 10. Till then, you take good care. Khuda Hafiz.